I'm here with Chris Galhar, who is the chief technical officer and lead chemist here at BNB Blending. Uh, and not only that, but he's an amazing innovator in the car care industry as a whole. Uh, and BNB Blending formulates the chemistries at Adams Polishes, but also you guys, I mean, you supply a huge market share of the car care industry. Uh, I mean, even from, you know, direct to consumer all the way to, to drive through car washes. Right? right, right. Yeah. So in our discussion today, what I want to do is get a little bit of background on Chris, but mainly what I want to grill him about <laughs> is graphene, right? We There's a lot of, of talk online about graphene. It's snake oil. It's not worth it. It's not really any better, this and that. I really want to dive into the weeds. Yeah, so I run the technical team here at b, &B. Um, I also do project workflow over at Am. so we have separate R&D groups. Um, we have about three chemists here at b, b and a QC engineer. I've been with b, &B about nine years since 2014, um, and uh, I've been formulating car care products that whole time when I initially came into b, &B. Coatings were just starting to kind of be whispered about. So one of my first projects when I first came in was building the coatings category for BNB. It was a product category that they didn't participate in. Um, coatings have been around since the 80s, and but it hadn't really done anything in the U.S. market. So we started digging into the technologies, learning about silazanes, um, figuring out how to formulate with a very kind of reactive raw material and something that's very moisture sensitive and uh, ambiently curing. You can kind of think of something if it's a water-based product and it's marketed as ceramic, it's often SiO2 in the form of silicates. A trimethoxysilicate is a functionalized silicate so we can react with it and we can do things with it. There's catalysts involved, TiO2 and things like that titanates that are in the blends in order to get them to cure at ambient temp. So these are basically going from a silicone to an amino functional silicone to a heavy molecular weight amino functionalized silicone resin to silicates, which cure glass-like. That's silica. When we get into silazanes, very moisture reactive, very reactive with water. They go through a conformational change when they're in ambient air and you'll smell the ammonia coming off and they turn into SiO2 coatings that reduce and they shrink and cure hard and cross-link heavily. Um, but in order to get that ambiently temperature curing, it required organo functionality. So we were working with organo silazanes. But essentially, that's a silazane that has functionality on it that doesn't do work. What it's like dead ends on the polymer where yes. Two methyl groups will look at each other and they don't bond. So you're just like a dead end that didn't cure. So as we went from that, we had conversations of how do we make that functionalized? Functionalization is taking the polymer backbone, which is the main chain of the polymer, which is repeating units, is that and bolting stuff to it. I see. That can give it new functionality. So you can put Perfluoro on there means all of it is dead ended with fluorines. You can put on chloros, you can put on now graphene oxide, which is what we did. So we said, let's go through and cleave off all of the methyl groups and instead bolt on graphene oxide. And why graphene oxide? Much like silicone dioxide, silicon isn't super functional. Silicon dioxide becomes something that we can work with as a chemist. Graphene isn't super functional. Graphene oxide is something that we can work with as chemists. So by building the graphene oxide on there, we got that reactive group with the oxides that we can then do work. We can marry it with surfactants and emulsify it into water-based systems. It acts like a deterrence for um, things attacking the polymer backbone. So the silazane will bond to the car's surface and the graphene acts as interference with the oxide groups as our ability to do work with the polysilazane chain and anything else we want to functionalize. Wow. So essentially we put in like kind of a workhorse functionalization to retrofit the ceramic resins to do more things. And what we saw in the lab doing pound for pound analysis, you know, make a formula with this resin and make a formula with this resin, one for one, no differences and changes. So we did things like contact angle measurements, scrub testing, coefficient of friction, hardness with the pencil hardness tester, um, pendulum hardness, like so beating it with the pendulum, impact testing. And we just saw kind of across the board improvements with that. So while I can't speak to what every other coating manufacturer is doing with their formulas, that was the natural evolution of our raw materials going through our lab. So with this new graphene oxide technology, it's a graphene oxide functionalized ceramic resin. And I remember being in meetings and saying this to the marketing team at Adams and they were like, 
Literally no one will understand that if we market <laughs> it that way. Yeah. But that's, that's what we're dealing with here. And so now what we look to in the future is what other functionalizations can we do to the silazane? Are we working with silazane at all or new material? Yeah. So when we're getting the graphene oxide, you're doing a reaction to reduce the graphene oxide, as we've said in other videos yeah. and stuff. If you heavily reduce graphene oxide, you're essentially cleaving off all the oxides and it becomes graphene yeah. and then it becomes inert and it doesn't participate. So rather than purify or filter that out or um, react it in less excess, we just allow it to react in excess so we have an abundance of extra material and we just live with it so that we can have that phenotypical difference of the yeah. black. So I recall when we were doing this, um, working with Adam specifically, I was like, should we leave the black particulate in it or not? Is it point, does it make an, is there a point to it or not? And he felt, and others too, that we needed to convey to the consumer that this is a differentiated coating. Yeah. Because in its natural form, the graphene oxide resin just looks kind of yellowish or off-white. Mm -hmm. So building it into a solvent-based system, you just make your coating go from nearly colorless to slightly yellow. Huh. So people would be like, I don't really notice much of a difference. Yeah. So by building in the black particulate, it one, helps us with identifying what coating we're working with, but two, it's also just like a way for the consumer to understand that they're working with a newer technology. Yeah, yeah. So here's my question, why graphene? Why not something on a different We could material? do other things. Yeah. So some of the choice with graphene was the availability and the willingness to do it. Some of it is like individuals like myself that are a technical leader. I'm looking at what the markets are doing. I'm watching charcoal show up in people's uh, toothpaste yeah. and I'm seeing kind of new nano materials created for silicon wafers and stuff like that. And it's graphene's a, an in-demand material and a lot of improvement had happened on being able to work with graphene and graphene oxide and build it into new materials. And I was like, why not car care? So my question is, so do the the previous iteration of just silazane, not, not with the reduced graphene oxide, but do they even like have any functionality in the market anymore? Like they do. Yeah. 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 I mean, so we still, so we still sell plenty of ceramic coatings, still using the organo polysilazanes yeah. and those coatings perform just fine too. So why would someone buy that versus the graphene? So some of the differences in the formula isn't just what resin are you using? Like what's the polymer? Just like in all these other car care products, you don't just have a bottle of Carnuba wax. There's all kinds of other ingredients that go alongside it. So sort of what will differentiate one coating from the next is uh, what's your solvent blend? You know, what constituents do you have in there to leave high open time and high dwell time versus it curing very quickly versus doing large area, surface area versus small. Interesting. Um, you have, Lots of other um, secondary ingredients in the blend that will contribute to additional hardness, contribute to slickness, contribute to um, uh, additional detergency resistance and exaggeration of the contact angle and stuff like that. So not only are we improving the resins themselves, we're improving all the secondary ingredients as well. Are these other coatings that are out there that aren't graphene garbage? No. Um, certainly not, but this was a natural evolution that made sense for us and our brand and our chemistry. And we've continued to evolve that with like the advanced coatings. Those are higher actives, but we have to still modify all the secondary ingredients and rebalance the formula to make it not just the same, but a lot harder to yeah. use. And to be able to overnight ship it. Right. So <laughs> like one of the complaints on the earlier formulas was, hey, we need to find a way to make this non-flammable. So the, the advanced um, products are non-flammable, yeah. for example. So changing of the solvencies. I mean, to me, the graphene also symbolizes the company's ability and willingness to try new technologies, to keep innovating, to keep pushing forward. Thank, Thank you. you. I'll talk. Well, we're going to go test some stuff. So. Yeah, right. <laughs> we'll keep hanging out. Yep. Thanks. Thanks, Chris.